What does a man, woman want in a relationship? That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Five Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. This is a conversation I'm talking on because, as you know, I, I, I'm always a person that's always studying. I'm always looking to hear other people's perspective, get other people's views. No one has all the answers for anyone, which actually brings me to why we're having this topic and actually my answer to that particular conversation is that whenever we have these conversations and they're being held by uh, everyone that's considered a relationship guru and that kind of stuff, that's why I don't use titles. I can only tell you things from my personal perspectives, things that I believe, my opinions, and, and usually it's going to be what I'm looking for. There's the key, what I just said. I'm really sharing with you what I am looking for. I shared probably a, a couple of uh, podcasts before about uh, a good friend who wrote a book and she basically was talking about, because she was helping people that are getting out of the prison system, you know, guys to get back into the dating. And one of the things that she talked about is when you're going on that first date, not to wear plaids, you know, this kind of stuff. And when I saw that, I started laughing because I said, well, that's her perspective and her view and what she's looking for. She wouldn't want to go out with you on a first date with plaid. But guess what? There are women that would. And that's actually the woman that you're looking for, which kind of what it's it really kind of uh, why I said everyone's giving their perspective, their views, and then they're trying to make it gospel. That's why when we talk about the, you know, you'll hear people say, well, 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent of guys believe and think this way are women using the same numbers. It's always people that have made up these numbers in their head. There's no proof to verify anything that's being said. And how do I know that to be accurate? Because there's no test that's ever tested 70, 80 percent of men and women. OK, there's no test in existence that has been on 70, 80 percent of men and women, because you not only have to talk about a neighborhood, you would have to deal with a country. You would have to, you see, there's nothing in existence that has ever uh, uh, touched those kind of numbers to be accurate. So it's always going to be perspectives. And, and most of those perspectives comes from culture. That's why I, I've shared that before when I hear like ladies say, like, and I've had ladies tell me that, well, women think a certain way. And I asked them, I said, well, okay. Like I was sharing that with this one young lady. She was telling me, she said, like, I'm a feminist. I go to all the marches. And uh, women, we kind of think the same. And I said, really? And I said, so this lady over here, I've known her for about 20, 25 years. You I just met. But based on your perspective, it's pretty safe to say I already know you because of her. Would that be accurate? And she's like, oh, no. I said, wait, 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 wait. But y'all the same. You think the same. You act as, see, folks, that's a myth. The same thing I was sharing with a gentleman who shared the same thing. I said, you mean I can go to Africa? I can go to Australia? I can go to Mexico? I can go just anywhere and all the men think the same way we do here in the U.S.? He's like, no. Right. Folks, this is culture. Culture's teaching this. So whenever we get on these topics about what men are looking for, what women are looking for, it's made up. It's people giving you their perspectives and their views, and those perspectives and those views have been programmed into those people based on their culture. Because you could go into certain cultures where women are still treated as second-class citizens. Therefore, those women see their, way, their selves differently. They see relationships differently. They see the world differently. Why? Because of the way their environment, their culture has taught them to see themselves and to view themselves and not to have that belief in high esteem for themselves. That's not a woman thing. It's not a man thing. That's a culture thing. You come to our culture where women are given, you know, in most instances, <laughs> and it's not supposed to be given anyway, they're free. But they're uh, here, we're not looking at women as second-class citizens again, although we know there are a lot of people that do, uh, especially, and I'm not going to jump on that conversation, but especially the most men, most, that use the title, the man is the head of the household. Those are usually the guys that have a very low self-esteem. I mean, well, yeah, that too. But they look down on women. And they believe women are beneath them. And that's why your job is to serve them. There's nowhere is that ever a, a, a truth. It is something that some people pass on 
but it's not a truth. Yeah, yeah, I know. Some people are going to try to use biblical principles, but read your Bible closer again. It says she's a helpmate. That didn't say servant. That said a helpmate, a partner. Folks, it's not a servant. Um, head of household. We get into that. What does that actually mean? Creating, providing, protecting. What does that mean? Providing, protecting is not that I'm going out here fighting liars, t lions, tigers, and, and bears. Because we're not in that culture. We're not living in the wilderness. Quit trying to use caveman thought process as to justify the way you see the world today. We're not in that environment. So therefore, that's not what the providing and protecting is all about. Does she have the freedom to think for herself? Does she have the freedom to believe what she wants to believe? Can she go after the things that she desires? Are you going to protect her to make sure she feels free and give her that freedom and, and protection to know that she can go accomplish and be that support to do that? I laugh when I hear some gentlemen talk about, yeah, it's my job to protect her. And then they're out there cheating on her. You're doing the ultimate pain to her. How can you sit here talking about, I'm the man of the house, my job, I'll protect my woman, while you're out cheating on her? Man, you're doing the more, more damage than her than anyone else could possibly do. Check yourself. So, but anyway, the whole idea of this knowing what men and women want is a myth. I've talked about it before using Tony Robbins' six human needs. There are six human needs. Uh, we talk about... Um, in those six human needs, and Tony Robbins even does that. He he uh, he figures out which two your top two of those six uh, human needs um, are you actually driving you. So if we have six human needs and we're gonna take two of those as our main driving force, there is no way that men think. There is no way that women think. Folks, that's a con that's a contradiction. Because if I have to sit there and find out what are your two major things that's driving you, your two is different than the next guy. So how do men think the same if we're being driven by different forces? The only place, and that's the reason you guys hear me say that all the time, where men are men is physical. Where women are women is physical. Why? You need certain things to make a woman a woman. You need certain things to make a man a man. But when it comes for what's driving people, what people want, all those kind of things, culture plays a big, because you get in certain cultures where they're teaching you, like my wife and I, when we went to, uh, and, and again, those know my story, know that this is all past story because I lost her six years ago to cancer. But when we went to Hawaii, that's the thing that we enjoyed the most. We were there for like six months. And it's that nobody was sitting there judging you. Nobody was, what car are you driving? Nobody is worried about what home you live in. All people were worried about is you as an individual and, hey, you're going to come over to the house. We're going to do a, a family gathering. We're going to do, folks would, I mean, that's why I said for me, that was probably the only place that I could say I could actually go there and live. Now, I know probably also being older is why I could go there because <laughs> relaxation is cool. But even that, I probably want to come back to the, to, you know, to the to the city, because over there, because we were in uh, um, Kauai, in Kauai, there's not much to do. You're on an island. I mean, so you don't have the amusement parks. You don't have all the things that if you're in the city, you don't have Universal Studios. You don't have all the stuff that you know Disneyland. All the the things that you have here, especially in California, and so those things, eventually you'd be like, eh, relaxing, that's cool, but sometimes I want to go do something. So that's when the city would come back into play. So, but my point here is I think they've actually realized what's important and it's about people. So in that culture, the material stuff is not focused on because don't nobody care. We came back to the U.S. and as soon as we got off the plane, we're like, we looked at each other and like, we're back because we know here in California, that's at the top of the list. What you drive, with the clothes you're wearing, what neighborhood you live in, how big is your house? It's, see, that's the culture in California that teaches that, that everyone's always judging. So if you take those two examples that I just used, how can you say men and women think a certain way when in those different environments, the people, male and female, see the world differently because the culture's different. 
the programming is different. Therefore, what people are going to be looking for is going to be different. You guys follow me? So I guess what I'm getting to is there is no such thing. And yet everybody wants to, and, and, and the main reason, and I understand why people do it, is because they want to sound like the expert and the professional and listen to me because I know all the answers. No one has all the answers, first off. But then there is no expertise when it comes to what a man wants and what a woman wants. You have to, that's why you always hear me say character and integrity first. Look for that in people. Find out, and that's why the first thing I talk about is self-love. Get you together first when you love the person you see in the mirror so you know the direction in which you're headed. And then you turn around and you can and you can work on relationships because now you're not caught in all the things that your culture is teaching you that's important. And you're running around like if your culture, like we just said, if your culture is teaching you, look for the car, look for the home, look for it. Then you start to gauge guys in that way and you can have a guy that would be perfect for you but because he doesn't have the external stuff that your culture is teaching you is important, then here's a great fit for you that you'll never give the time of day because the culture is making your decisions for you, not you. So my objective, and that's why everything I share is get to know you, love the person in the mirror. Then you're trying to find someone who's headed in the same direction as you. That's not going to be the culture dictating that. That's going to be you being comfortable first off in who you are and then finding someone who complements the direction in which you're having. And then you're not judging people based on what your culture has told you is what a man's looking for and what a woman is looking for. Again, using the six human needs, we all have all six. You usually, you usually have two that are moving your life. So if that's true, because we, we always want to talk about how men, women, how men think and how women think. But the reality is there are no two men that think the same. There are no two women that think the same. So if that's true, how do we have a conversation of what men are looking for or what men want or what women are looking for, or what women don't? When there's no two people alike, we got to quit having the conversation that everybody is unique and then turn around and have the conversation on well, you know, this is how men think. Oh, no, no, no. Well, let me tell you about how women think and what women look for. You don't know. Nobody knows. That's why for me, you have to get you clear first. Then go find a partner and quit letting the world make that decision for you. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. You can see all the things I have going on. And again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And folks, just remember, there is no formula. There is no one that can give you the answer. This is about you figuring you out and finding someone who complements the direction in which you're going and that is the person you're worried about, how they think, not how men or how women think, because who cares? I'm looking for a match for me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.